Emeritus Barrientes and to Pastor, as known on Facebook, Pastor Juan. Yeah. Um, and to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. It is good to be here, isn't it right? Amen. All right, now I'm away from home. Let's get this established real quick. At home, at the New Hope Church where I'm from, we talk back to the preacher. Amen. 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 It, it's good to be here. Isn't that right? Amen. All right. All right. Y'all catching on. Y'all good class. Amen. A good class. Um, yes, bring your greetings from the New Hope Baptist Church where my pastor is Pastor E.J. Tyson, uh, where I serve as associate minister and minister of music. Um, that is my church. That's the only church I know. Amen. I was born there and I'm still there. And if it wouldn't be today, I'd be sitting on the organ right now. Uh, <clears throat> let me thank Pastor Juan for this opportunity um, to come and to share. Uh, he knows a lot of preachers. As a matter of fact, he could have just let his dad preach the whole month. Uh, but for this opportunity, he did not have to call me to come and to share. So thank you, brother, and uh, I want to acknowledge my wife back there. Uh, wave your hand, baby. Man, ain't she cute? Why she cute? Lord, I bless you. And then, and then I brought some amens with me. Amen. amen. And, uh, amen. Nine and seven. Amen. Keontae and Tayshawn. Amen. So if y'all don't say nothing, uh, they will. Amen. But also, if y'all treat me bad, Keontae is security. <laughs> and he will see, he waved his hand so don't mess with his daddy. Amen. Amen. Um, I was torn today because uh, last week, uh, I'm sure you all were blessed by Pastor Barrientes Sr. with the word. And Pastor Juan, through the wonderful use of technology, posted, Doc, posted the video. And uh, I said, well, let me just see what Pop talked about. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, that the very text that I've been studying for the last three or four months, trying to get ready for this occasion, was the very text that he preached on last week and so after I just turned the video off I didn't even want to listen to it no more I just said you know oh my goodness what am I going to do uh, and I text Juan and say man your dad stole my text and he said well it must be God along with the LOL on the side and so I prayed I said Lord you know I, I don't want to do that please give me something else you know that was my prayer and I'm still waiting on him to answer. So being that he ain't gave me nothing else, let's go back to Romans chapter eight. And for reading purposes today and this discussion, we wanna look at Romans chapter eight. We're gonna read verse 28. We're gonna read verses, verse 31. And then we're gonna close out with verse 35 through 39. And let me give a disclaimer. Uh, I'm a preacher. So at any given moment, I may holler. All right. I may get loud. I ain't being mean. I just love the word of God. Amen. And I get excited. Amen. Amen. Anybody get excited about Jesus? Amen. Amen. You know what I'm saying? We miss that from church. You know what I'm saying? We come to church now. We just come and put on our good church clothes. And we drive all this way at $4 a gallon. And then we're not excited. Amen. Amen. If you're going to get that dress, you never mind. Anyway, this ain't my church. Listen, y'all ready? Y'all got it? <laughs> Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, you ready? Amen. All right, I'm going to read from the uh, English Standard Version. Verse 28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Let's look at verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, 
who can be against us? Now let's go to verse 35 and finish out the chapter. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Verse 37. Knowing all these things, we are more, somebody say more, more, more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure, your Bible says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Amen. Dealing with your theme and building the kingdom of God and manifesting in that the only way you can do that is that you have to become inseparable to God. All right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to talk about, inseparable. Not Natalie Cole's version, but what we're going to try to argue in this text. Uh, becoming inseparable is important. And the most, one of the things that is important in my introduction that is important is that you have to have the right connection. Right. Mm -hmm. um, used to install internet services for this lab and um, come to realize that there are different types of connections. Yeah. And so it is for the believer that we have to have the right connection. Yeah. I'm a church boy, been in church all my life, and I, I, will, I will submit to you today that some people have connections that are dormant. Mm. Um, simply to say that, that that connection is closed or canceled. Y'all know if y'all don't pay your internet bill, yeah. that connection can become Dormant. Yeah. And what that says to the believer is, and this is key, is that if your connection is dormant, you have no access to information or instruction. Yeah. Now, secondly, somebody may have a connection that is distorted. Mm -hmm. And that is to say that you're partially connected. I'm sometimes I'm on, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm not. But 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 the connection we should desire to have today is a connection that is considered a dominant connection. And that connection is an established connection that is always on. Uh, a, a dormant connection is one that is closed. A distorted connection is one that's cloudy. And a dominant connection is continual. And, and, and in order to make, to, to manifest ourselves in the kingdom, we have to become inseparable by having the right connection. Yeah. And as we look at our text today, uh, uh, becoming inseparable, we will discover that life, first of all, will bring about some challenges. Right. Yeah. So my first point is, is that, that we will be overwhelmingly challenged. And, 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 and if we can be real in here this morning, uh, 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 I want to submit to you that problems and challenges are real. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 uh, you know, some of us come to church and we smile and try to act like we got it all going on. But, but, but if I'm here by myself, I'll testify myself. Sometimes I have some challenges and them challenges are real. Amen. Yeah, yeah, they're not a myth. They're not a figment of my imagination. They're, they're not psychosomatic. They are real. Yeah. And if y'all could testify today, uh, I'm sure some of you all would agree to me that you've had some challenges and you've had some big challenges and those challenges are real. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Not only are those challenges real, but those challenges, Pastor, those challenges are rough. 
Come on, talk to me, somebody. Is that these challenges can be rough. Sometimes it's just too much to handle. It's too much to handle. But let me just throw this in here parenthetically here. The old song says, I'm coming up the rough side of the mountain. And, and many of us don't want to climb the rough side of the mountain. But let me tell you something. When you climb the rough side of the mountain, it's easier to make it to the top than it is on the smooth side. Oh, yeah. oh, I ain't got no help. Because on the smooth side, you ain't got nothing to hold on to. On the smooth side, you can slide down just as easy as you get up. But on the rough side, all right, all right. you got to hold on. And, and the good news of, the, of it is, is that when you finally make it to the top, you will discover that you have enough strength to stay up top. Oh, right. right. uh, you can appreciate it more. I, 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 my mom used to always tell me that, you know, if I get stuff the easy way, I'll never appreciate it. If I get a woman the easy y'all don't, don't get mad at me. If I get a woman the easy way, I ain't going to appreciate it. But if I got to work for it, yeah, yeah, yeah. that wasn't even on my page. But sometimes <laughs> challenges can be real. Yeah. Sometimes they can be real rough. Amen. And, 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 and many of us in the urban community and being of, uh, looking like we look, sometimes problems and challenges are regular. Amen. Yeah. And, 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 so, and so it seems like that is happening all the time. And, 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 and however, however, Paul encourages us today in verse 28. He says, and we know. And we know. Yeah. That all things, uh, 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 and, and, I, and I love it when I got the revelation on that, because all things says good and bad things. Yeah, yeah. Come on, talk to me. We'll work together for good. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. So although the challenges are, 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 are real and rough and real regular, if we have the right relationship with God, because the Bible says for those who love God and are the call according to his purpose. Yeah. If you love him, have the right relationship, the good and the bad, the real problem, the rough problem, the regular problem work together yeah. for the good. Verse 31 says, it gives us some more encouragement there. It says, if God be for us, Amen. who can be against us? He says that uh, not only will people come against you, but when he says the word if, it almost implies that he can't. But that is not the interpretation of the text. This is a declarative statement right here. This word if, this preposition if, I don't mean to go to English class, but sometime I go. And, 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 and what that says is, he says, because God yeah. is for us, Amen. Amen. who can be against us? All right. and, 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 and so what it is is, is that we have good news that whatever we're dealing with, whatever challenges we're facing, whatever we're going through will work out for our good because of who got our back. All right, yes. all right. Oh, yeah. And so, and so I like it when he says, and who, which says it could be anybody or anything. Yeah. He could have just picked out a certain thing. And, you know, you would say, well, you know, God is for us, so that one thing can't be against us. Right. But he said who? When he asked that question, that brought everything in. And so when God is for you, nothing can be against you. Oh, yeah. Amen. Secondly, not only will you be overwhelmingly challenged, but uh, you will overwhelmingly conquer. And this is why I got excited about the text. Uh, verse 37 says, uh, nay, in all these things, we are more, more than conquerors through him that loved us. And sometimes I overthink and uh, I got stuck on the words more than. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because I thought conquering was just good enough. Amen. Yeah. You know, I've been a musician for a long time, and I thought uh, Kurt Franklin wrote a song and said, We are conquerors. And, you know, Vashon Mitchell had a song about conquerors, but it sounds good and it's encouraging, but that's not what Paul says. Yeah. Paul says, Not only are we conquerors, uh -huh. but we are more than conquerors. Uh -huh. Did y'all see that or did y'all tell that? And so as I studied the text, I discovered is that what the text is saying, we will overwhelmingly conquer with success to spare. Oh, yeah, well. And what it does is, what it does is, y'all ready? Y'all go, we're almost done. I don't, it don't take long to preach. Uh, 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 it says that 
he, uh, the writer draws a comparison to how we went into it and to how we came out of it. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the first thing is, is that he said, when you, when you are more than a conqueror, you come out smarter than you were before. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. More than because you're more than. Yeah. So you know what that means is? You know, when you come out of it, you're going to sit there and say, if I knew then, uh-huh. what I know now. Yeah, yeah. That's the evidence that says I'm smarter. Yeah. Okay. Not only are you smarter when you come out, but you're stronger. Uh-huh. Ever went through something, ever went through something, and you look back on it and say, I don't know how I made it through that. Oh, yeah. Because when you come, when you when you are more than a conqueror, you come out smarter and you come out stronger. Yeah. Oh, yes, but the writer also gives an indication, not only do you come out smarter and stronger, but he says with enough to spare. That's what overwhelmingly is suggesting, is that you will have some more. So what it is, is not only do I build up more brain, not only do I build up more muscle, but not just to make it through what I'm going through now, but even when I get to the next one, I still got some more. Oh, yeah. Somebody should have shouted right through there. I told y'all, y'all got to make noise of that. Y'all scared me. That's why I'm wrestling. Let me slow down. <laughs> Put the brake on. <laughs> and so what it is, is, is that he says on this side, I was challenged, but when I came through, I was more than. Uh-huh. See, we get stuck. We just want to be victorious, uh-huh. but that's not what it says. Yeah. It says I'm more than that. Oh yeah. yeah. Because I'm inseparable. I'm connected to God. Amen. So I'm connected to God. And see, let me say this. Let me throw this in here. This ain't on my page either. Please forgive me. I'm just getting all off my note. But quit letting people tell you all wretched and you all down. Try. I mean, I know, I know we're nothing compared to God. Yeah. But we are somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's more scriptures that God, uh, Paul also says in Colossians that you are the elect of God. Which means you are somebody. Yeah. God chose you. Yeah. And if you was nothing, why would he choose you? Amen. 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 Yes. And so we have to understand that, that we are more, more. than a conqueror. Uh-huh. And, and so I'm moving on. Y'all not going to talk to me today. All right, go ahead. So I'm going to move to this last thing. And, uh, and I hope I don't stay here too long. Not only will you overwhelmingly be challenged. That's just a fact of life. Uh-huh. Uh, John, John the Beloved writes in his gospel, he says, in this life, you will have trouble. Amen. Oh, yeah. Trials, whatever the translation you have. But he says, don't worry, be happy, because I've already overcome uh-huh. the world. Actually, let me, let me just not say it like that. That was Bobby McFerrin that said, don't worry, be happy. But what Jesus said is, be of good cheer. Amen. For I have already overcome the world. So you will be overwhelmingly challenged, but you will overwhelmingly conquer. You will be more than a conqueror. But not only that, it's because of that that Paul right here, he begins to shout the end of the text. He shouts the end of the text by saying, I'm overwhelmingly convinced. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This is what it says. You got your Bible still open. Don't you? It says, for I'm persuaded that neither life that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things <clears throat> to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul says I'm convinced that nothing will be able to separate me that makes me inseparable from the love of God. Now let, now, 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 I love to play with the Bible so, so let, me, let me just draw some conclusions here on how Paul changes the text. Uh, uh, we started out talking about our love for God and what happens. Okay? Right. We, we talked about what he says in verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good for them who are the called and the, who the ones that love God. He's talking about the way we love God. But then all of a sudden, he, came, he became convinced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so his convincing had nothing to do with his love for God, but it had to do with God's love for us. So he changes how he was talking. First he was talking about how we loved him. Yeah. But now he's saying on how God loves 
us. Yes. Yes. And, and so I love the word persuaded because it gives a indication that he wasn't always there. Yeah. Oh, yes. If you have to persuade somebody prior to your persuasiveness, they must not have believed. Amen. As a matter of fact, I just got through teaching in Sunday school in the seventh chapter of uh, of uh, Acts, uh, and where Stephen was being stoned, and, and and when they begin to lay the clothes at a certain person's feet, it was that certain person by the name of Saul. Oh. His name was Saul because he wasn't persuaded yet. <laughs> My goodness! And so what happened is because of Stephen. See, people, don't, and I saw that today because of Stephen standing on the promises and the principles and the practices of God, he began to, that, that seed had to have been implanted in Saul. And so when Saul, he still was a murderer. He still was trying to persecute the church. And Saul was on his way to Damascus. And then on the road to Damascus, he had an earthquake and fell to his knees. And, and, and he was blinded. And, and, and he began to go. And he became one of the greatest apostolic preachers of that we know even right now. And so what he says was is that I hadn't always believed. But because of all of the things that I did and all of the things that were done to me, if it had not been for God on my side, I don't know where I would be if so now I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. How, how, how can he be persuaded? Well, I got two things and I'm done. He, he, he said he's convinced when he looked at the life. Of Jesus, uh, he looked at Jesus while he he loved while he uh, lived. Uh, said on Facebook the other day that 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 three things God demonstrated His love in Jesus's birth. You saw love initiated in Jesus's life. You saw love elucidated, and then when you see Jesus's death, you saw love authenticated. Yeah. And what happens is is that when Jesus began to show His love while He was living, He was feeding the sick, He was healing the, the, the um, He was healing the sick, and He was feeding the hungry. And he was going about all this stuff that he wasn't even supposed to be doing. Amen. Come on, somebody. And that's why now we still caught up in the miraculous part of Jesus. But there was a woman whose daughter was grievously vexed with the devil. And she kept calling him Lord, son of David. And that word right there means that he's a miracle worker. But it wasn't until she called him Lord and took the son of David off that he said, woman, great is your faith. And now not only are you here, but your daughter is too. And so what happens is, is that she became persuaded. And, and, and even though he called her dog, even though he ignored her, he informed her, and then he insulted her. Now all of a sudden she's still saying, "I'm not. I still need you to do it. I still need you to do it." And she said, "Truth, Lord. Even but even the dogs get the crown from the master's table." Yeah, yeah. And so, so not only was Paul convinced by the way he loved while he was living, but last of all, he was convinced by the love he showed when he left. Right. And we're talking about Jesus. See, see, so, so, so he was wounded. That's what the Bible says for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. He was per, he was pierced for our guilt. He was suffering for our shame. He was tortured for our shortcomings. He was beaten for our wrong. He suffered not because of what he was, but because of what we were. So I am convinced. I wish I had some help now. I'm done. That I'm convinced that regardless of what I'm going through, can't nothing separate me from the love of God. Not because of what I've done, because I know I. I ain't done everything correct. But when Jesus died on the cross, when he died on the cross and he shed his blood, the Bible says for without the remission, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So because he shed blood, he shed blood for their sins and my sins and your sin and my baby's sins and them to come sin. And so I'm persuaded that even at the end of my road that I can go to a heaven where the streets are paved with gold. The walls are covered with jasper, 12 gates in the east. Three gates in the east, the north, and in the south. And I'm going to say, holy, holy, holy. And I wish I had somebody out there that was persuaded that, that no matter what you're going through, that you're going to trust him. Trust him. Let me share in closing that every church is a mega church. Amen. Oh, yes. If you got a mega mentality. Uh -huh. All right. If you don't do nothing but save one person. Oh, yes. Yes. Luke chapter 15 says the angels in heaven rejoice over one lost soul. But to make shield of faith be the shield of faith God has intended for it to be, every individual has to be sure, has to be persuaded has to be convinced that nothing could ever separate them 
from God. And if each individual can get it, can you imagine what kind of church Amen. that you can have? Sometimes we sweat and we holler and we teach and we do all this stuff up here for nobody not to get it. But let me let me give you let me give you the, the synopsis and let me give you the summary of it. This is what it is. You gonna go through something. Gonna go through something. Yeah. But the payoff is far greater than what you go through. Some people are hurting. People are health have health issues. I never understood why my grandma, she was never broke. And if I told y'all what she made, there's no way in the world we could make it now. She made about eight hundred a month. She look at y'all, but she made it. Whenever we needed something, we can go by grandma's house. Mm-hmm. But now we didn't got big, got flat screens, got decent jobs, and, and broke as a joke because we won't do it God's way. Oh yes. Not only not doing it God's way with your finances, but even in your relationships. Oh yes. We have a lot of people who pick; they don't pray. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And so what it is, is is I'm concerned about our generation. As young adults, we still playing, trying to be a child until somebody wants to give us some rules and then we want to be grown. And we're caught in the middle. And I want to share with you that I haven't worked since 2009, July of 2009. But I serve my church, I serve my pastor, serve my wife, serve my kids. And I ain't never missed a meal. And what God did, they created a position at the church. So instead of getting up to go clock in at some other place, I go down to the church every day. But what? But it's, it's, I'm not saying that because for you all to one day start working at the church. I'm just saying that if you are led by God and are responsible with the things that he's blessed you with, he's going to bless and open doors you can't even imagine. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have struggles, but you know the end of the story. The Lord shared with me something yesterday as I was watching OU. Oh, did I say that out loud? I knew I get some amens on that, pump, pump, pump. Don't y'all let my phone go off because the fight song might play. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, the thing is, honestly, when the storms were coming, the storms didn't last. Yeah. No matter what devastation is done, it's still over. When you know what's coming, you can take shelter. Amen. And it don't last always. We grew up from 86 to 79th Street in one of the toughest neighborhoods in the city. But guess what we're doing now? Yeah. I still wear red. All right. <laughs> Pops used to drive a red Cadillac. No, I'm just playing. But what I'm saying is, is that <clears throat> I want you to be serious about your Christianity and about your salvation because there are people just outside the door, literally and figuratively, that are going to hell. And the problem is there's nobody in the church that looks like Jesus. And that's what they need to see. When you said you give yourself away so he can use you, that don't necessarily mean use you here because it's cool, y'all got good, comfortable seats. No, out there. Oh, yes. Yes. So if you want to be manifested in the kingdom of God, you got to be inseparable. You're going to be challenged, but you will conquer. And so hopefully when you leave today, you'll be convinced that I'm not going to be separated. I might have came in here today with doubts. I might have came in here doubting. What is this thing all about? Mm-hmm. Every time I try to live more for God, stuff seems to get worse. Oh, yes. And let me share it with you, uh, Psalm 73, Pastor, and I'm done. Uh, 
David began to write, he was uh, didn't understand why the wicked was prospering. Yeah. Didn't understand why they was prospering and no and no uh, 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 punishment and didn't didn't get it. But I think around verse 17, David said, "I understood when I went to church." And that's what it is. It doesn't what the world does and throws at you does not matter. Because when you come into church, you will get the tools you need to go defeat the world. And the, the world is already defeated. Uh -huh. So remain inseparable. Don't let it separate you. Last scripture, because so y'all can say I gave y'all some Bible. Is Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You change the way you think, you change the way you act. And if you if you said today, I'm going to remain connected to God, there's nothing out them doors that can ever stop you. Amen. Come on, would y'all clap and receive that with us today?